It's that terrible, horrible time of year again, where if you've been on a break from educating yourself at an institution of learning, you now have to return there, which is just the worst. But hey, at least you can use it as an excuse to maybe get a new laptop, but which to pick? That, my friends, is why I'm here. From high-powered gaming laptops to sleek ultrabooks to more budget-friendly options, it can be a lot to take in. Let me simplify it for you. To the intro! <laughs> Office 365. Get work done anytime, anywhere, and on any device. In addition to one terabyte of OneDrive storage, also receive 60 Skype World Minutes per month to over 60 countries. Do a search for laptops and you will get loads of results. Ultrabooks, convertibles, midsize, budget, gaming. There are tons in every category and it can be kind of intimidating to pick one. The best way to narrow it down is, what are you gonna use it for? Do you just need something to take notes and browse the internet? Are you going to be using it all the time with software that requires a little more horsepower like Adobe or CAD software? Are you a PC gamer who wants your work laptop to double as a gaming machine? I don't know who you are, so I'm just gonna talk about all of them. So let's start with the middle of the road, ultrabooks and hybrids. This is what you're looking for if you're doing more than just web browsing and note taking. I've said the word Ultrabook a few times now. If you don't know, Ultrabook is Intel's trademark term for laptops that meet certain requirements on thinness without compromising performance and battery life. But it's kind of become a general term in the industry for thin, powerful laptops. The Lenovo X1 Carbon is an official Intel Ultrabook. It's an excellent example of a laptop that is everything you need to do serious work while maintaining a very thin, light design. This particular model is at the highest end of the Carbon lineup with a 4th gen i7 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, a 256 gig SSD, and a 14 inch IPS 1440p screen for around $199 on sale. But there's quite a few options in between this and the lowest end option with an i5 processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and a 128 gig SSD for around $1300. Unlike other thin notebooks, it's got an ethernet port, a full size HDMI port, and display port for all the connectings. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, it's kind of a gray featureless slab, but it's clean and that's part of the overall draw of this machine. It gets the job done without unnecessary bells and whistles. Although it does have some exclusive features that can actually be really useful if you like them, like the track point, which you can use instead of a mouse, and it's actually pretty useful, I used it, and the fingerprint reader on the side. It's also one of the few modern laptops that you can choose to get Windows 7 pre-installed instead of 8.1. Lenovo has updated its X1 Carbon design this year with modern processors, and you can even get it with a touchscreen if you want, which is nice since the display can extend a complete 180 degrees. Overall, the X1 Carbon is an excellent choice if you're looking for a very thin, very light, and powerful laptop to run professional software as well as web browse. Now right here we have our sort of hybrid slash convertible slash mid-range offering, the Lenovo Flex 2. Since tablets went mainstream, laptop makers have been trying to create laptops that can double as tablets. The Flex 2 is one of those laptops. The keyboard can swivel 300 degrees back to a stand position, allowing you to, you to use the 14-inch IPS 1080p touchscreen, much like a tablet. There are some other laptops that allow you to rotate the screen all the way back, like the Lenovo Yoga 2 and others that are pretty much a tablet with a keyboard dock, like the Asus T100 over here. But regardless of the stand mode, the Flex 2 is a good mid-range option. You can get some decent specs, like the 4th gen i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and 128 gig SSD that's in this one for just under a thousand bucks. This laptop is not an official Ultrabook, it's a little thicker and heavier, but it's still a very light machine, especially compared to the gaming beasts over here, which we'll get to. If you don't particularly care that it doesn't completely fold all the way back, you can save some money over an Ultrabook by getting a laptop like the Flex 2 with decently powerful specs, good battery life, and a full HD IPS touchscreen. Speaking of saving money, let's move to the budget options. Now these are what you want to get if your primary use for a mobile computer is web browsing, some word processing, watching videos, playing the occasional light game. So let's start with this guy right here since I mentioned it earlier. This is the Asus Transformer Book T100. And while it is for all intents and purposes a small laptop, it is in reality a tablet with a keyboard dock. And you can see that when you look at what's inside. It's got an Intel Baytrail Z3740 processor, two gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of flash storage, although there is a micro SD slot for expansion. There are a number of other Transformer-like products from Asus and other vendors as well, as this form factor has gotten more popular. Now, the obvious advantage of this type of device is that you have a 10.1 inch tablet when you need it, perfect for watching video, playing Angry Birds, or sifting through social media. And then when you need to do things requiring a keyboard and trackpad, like using the free copy of Home and Student Office 2013 that comes with it, you snap it into the dock, which also gives you a full-size USB 3.0 port 
port in the side. This particular model goes for $449 and has been out since last year. Asus has actually released some newer models with i5 and i7 core processors in them instead of Bay Trail, and those are accordingly a little more pricey around the $800 range. If you're looking for a relatively inexpensive, versatile, full Windows 8.1 device, the Transformer line and other convertibles are definitely something to consider. Now let's say you don't need full Windows 8.1. The main thing you do is browse the web. In fact, that's all you do. Well, you should think about going outside sometimes, but you should also consider buying a Chromebook, especially if you use Chrome all the time. It's a Chrome book you're meant for each other. Basically, Chromebooks have shot up in popularity in recent years because they are super cheap and super useful for a lot of consumers who are mainly using their devices to access the internet. This model is the Acer C720P, which is in a lot of best top 10 most good Chromebooks lists because of its excellent battery life and performance. It's got a 1.4 gigahertz Intel Celeron processor, two gigs of RAM, a 16 gigabyte SSD, and a 11.6 inch 1366 by 768 touch screen. Those may sound like namby-pamby specs, but you have to realize what Chromebooks are. Basically, supercharged Chrome browsers with a keyboard and storage in a very light and portable package. There's also a USB 3.0 and 2.0 port, large SD card slot for expansion, and a full-sized HDMI port. You can store files locally on the SSD and open them up just like on a regular Windows laptop. Chrome itself, the application, has grown hugely since its humble beginnings. There are hundreds of free web apps that can emulate a lot of bigger software, many of which run offline just fine, including Google Drive for word processing, spreadsheets, and PowerPoint. Here in the office, we use Google Drive for everything. So for students, there's not a lot of better laptops you can buy for around 300 bucks. And the future for Chromebooks looks very interesting as well. There's actually another Acer Chromebook being released soon called the Chromebook 13, which I am hotly anticipating and which I would have gladly put in here instead of this one, but it's not out yet. That's going to run on the brand new quad-core NVIDIA Tegra K1, have a 13.3 inch 1080p screen, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, and have up to 13 hours of battery life. It will apparently be awesome for online 3D content using WebGL. If you're on a tight budget and do most of your work online, you should seriously consider getting one. It's cheap. And that brings us to the heavyweights, gaming laptops. These are the beastly kings of the laptop world, ruling over their kingdom with iron GPUs and, and, a, and a bad attitude. Here we have the Asus ROG G550 and the 2014 Razer Blades. Let's start with the prints and then we'll move on to the game. Now the Asus G550 JK is the company's take on the trend of thin gaming notebooks that's been sort of all the rage recently. It could be said that Razer started it with the original Razer Blade and since then we've seen other vendors coming out with their own sleek and smooth laptops with powerful graphics processors, backlit keys, and big old screens like the MSI GS60 and Gigabyte's P34. Now the G550 JK kind of cheats its way into the slim gaming laptop category. Its design is still quite thick compared to the rest of these, which is partly to do with the fact that it does have an optical drive in case you're still installing your games off discs. It's got a 15.6 inch 1080p screen and inside is an Intel Core i7 4700HQ, 8 gigs of RAM, a GeForce GTX 850M, and a 750 gig hard drive for around 1300 bucks. Now that places it at the lower end of your typical gaming laptop. Other variants of Asus G-Series can go up to 2400 bucks with 24 gigs of RAM and a GTX 880M inside. It's up to you whether you want to save some money on a portable gaming solution or lay it all out for a truly beastly machine. Speaking of beasts, that leads us to our last laptop, the 2014 Razer Blade. Now this guy will cost you over $3,000, so to get this, you really have to love gaming and sleek design. And the way that MacBooks look, because let's be serious, guys, that's what this looks like. It's a MacBook. Inside is a Core i7 4702 HQ processor, 8 gigs of RAM, a GTX 870M, and a 256 gig SSD. It also has a 14 inch 3200 by 1800 touchscreen because you want to be prepared for any game you play on this thing, even Angry Birds. The Razer Blade looks like a MacBook because, like Apple, Razer is charging here for the design. They've shown they can stuff high-grade gaming components and a super high-res display into a very small package, so you've definitely got to get them kudos for that. Would I recommend this for school if you need a laptop for work? Eh. Obviously, it will handle whatever you can throw at it, but just be aware, if you're mostly doing stuff other than hardcore gaming and video editing, you can definitely consider some of the other options I've talked about here. Well, that's about it for this roundup, guys. Hopefully, you learned something that you can use to purchase a laptop in this, the most terrible, Awful, horrendous, just, just the worst part of the year for students.
For everyone else, it's kind of just the same. You will find links for all these laptops and some other options in the description below, so check that out. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.